Hi, I'm out in the field early in the morning, but today I'm not looking for birds, but rather butterflies, which on a side note, in some regions of Switzerland, we actually call them summer birds. And I just thought I will take you with me today in the field, give you a look over my shoulder, so to speak, talk a bit about background, composition, about the camera settings and the equipment I'm using. Also, I hope it will be useful for you, or at least you can enjoy some pictures and videos. <laughs> So I mentioned before that I'm in a nice situation that there's a lot of butterflies around. So the next question might be, how do I settle for one of these? Um, there's a couple of things to consider. And the first one might be the species. If I'm looking for a certain species, of course, I will try to uh, find this one. But today is the first day of the season where I'm really trying to do the macro photography or butterfly photography. So I'm kind of open-minded. I'm taking what I get and I'm rather looking for a easy, well, one that is easy to work with. I will not try to make my life too hard today and ra for rather getting a bit more into the flow and mood of this macro photography. A second very important part is the way the butterfly is positioned. So in general, I don't like if it's like in a 45 degrees angle like this or like that because this usually results in the fact that I need to take pictures from top down or bottom up because I want to be parallel with the butterfly otherwise the wings will not be in not the whole wing will be in focus due to the extremely shallow f depth of field in micro photography and shooting either down means that the vegetation in the background is quite close resulting in a rather not so smooth and distracting background on the other hand if i shoot up i of course have the blue sky in the background which is also not what i want so one that is positioned perfectly vertically is actually my dream and speaking of background here it's a bit easier because as you can see i'm next to a small path it's not actually a road where cars are allowed to go so i won't be disturbed but i can have an easy access the vegetation is not too dense and for me also important, I don't need to trample down all the vegetation when I'm looking for a butterfly. I can just stay on the path and then maybe do one step into it. That should not do too much harm. And then last but not least, the place where the butterfly actually is. Usually I prefer flowers over grasses just because they look a bit more interesting and more colorful. But I also need to say, pretty much like with bird photography, I don't like too big perches which for birds would be big branches and here it would be big flowers. I have the feeling, at least for my style, they tend to take the focus away from the subject, the butterfly, and lead it more to the flower, which I don't like so much. And this especially holds true if it's a big and white flower that is just yeah, too bright and therefore distracting a bit in the image. I now set up my camera, it's the R5 and the 150mm macro lens of Sigma and it all is mounted on the Agitso 3543LS um, tripod with a flex shooter tripod head that I like very much because it's kind of a very universal head for me I can use it for landscapes, macro and bird photography and now I'm kind of adjusting myself to get in a perfect position for the butterfly and what I like to make sure here sometimes is that the background looks nice and sometimes I need a little bit help from my friend the scissor. Here I would just consider a few things. First of all, if you cut a few grasses carefully, really be careful that you're not interfering with the butterfly. And then second of all, look for protected species. You don't want to cut them here in this meadow. There are none. I checked this at least here. And third, maybe don't mow the whole meadow down but I think a few grasses are okay, especially since, as I mentioned, deer or other animals are also passing here. And to be realistic, in one or two weeks, this whole meadow will be completely mowed by human. So I think a few grasses are fine. Okay, I think it doesn't look too bad. Uh, I was also checking with the magnification if the sharpness is really fine. And yes, it seems like it is. So the background, as you can maybe see, is also not too bad. Uh, I just find it a bit boring, to be honest. So what I will try to do is find some nice colorful flowers and put them a bit in the background. 
So it didn't work out as planned with this particular butterfly. What happened? Well, it started to move a tiny bit. Um, this is actually quite natural that in the morning at some point when the sun is coming, they start to move and get active. And then in the late evening, they go back to one specific flower or a grass and stay there for the night. So this means the best opportunity that we have to take pictures of butterflies is either in the late evening or the early morning. As you saw today, I went for the morning decision for several reasons. First of all, in the evening they tend to be still kind of active if it's a warm day and if you get a bit too close you can disturb them and they might not fly away but still turn around so they're not perfectly in focus anymore and you need to rearrange your tripod and it's just annoying. Second, at least in my region it's often happening that in the evening there is still a tiny bit of wind. Luckily I'm not in a very windy region but still in the morning it's usually completely wind still. And this is so essential for macrophotography because these butterflies are in really fragile flowers or even worse as you have seen grasses and they start to moving if there's even so little of a w bit of wind there. And often we have a bit longer shutter speeds, maybe a tenth of a second, a twentieth of a second. And if there's wind that is moving these grasses, our images will mostly get blurry. So our best chance is a more or less wind free day. And then I would still recommend to take a couple of shots so that you can ensure that at least one of them is perfectly sharp. And the third reason why I went in the morning is actually that we have these small dew droplets, especially if the nights are a bit fresher and the day before was warm. Um, due to the hum humidity, it looks so nice in my opinion on butterflies and all other insects. And this is something we only have in the morning and we only have it if it's really, a, if there's a certain drop of temperature during the night. I think when I woke up this morning it was around 8 or 9 degrees Celsius. So again this would maybe not work if it's already, the day is already starting with 20 degrees. As I mentioned I luckily found another butterfly that I could take some pictures of. Um, I was also trying to use my small Wimberley clamp to put some flowers in, in front. I was not super convinced so what in, I did in the end actually was stabilizing the grass that the butterfly was on with my Wimbledon clamp and afterwards I tried but it was really hard to get the whole butterfly in focus and at the same time have a blurry background. So what I ended up doing was the so-called focus stacking. This basically is a process where the camera or you are changing the focus between each step a tiny bit and afterwards merging these pictures on the computer. So in the end you have a picture where the whole butterfly is sharp, but still shot with an aperture like f2.8, f3.5 or something quite open so that the background can still be blurry. And luckily on my R5 and on many R cameras now and actually also cameras from other cam um, companies, this is included and it's in the menu under the fifth tab of the red uh, camera menu. Um, and there's focus bracketing. The first thing we obviously need to do is enable it. Uh, afterwards we can select the number of shots. And I'm still experimenting here a bit, but I would rather tend to go for a higher number. And if you don't need as many afterwards, you can still delete them. But it's super annoying to see that basically your focus stacking went only around three quarter or covered only three quarter about what you wanted to have in focus and not all of it. The focus increment basically describes how much the focus is moving for each picture. This is not a, a unit of millimeters or anything. It's a bit arbitrary for me. Especially with macro photography, I prefer to keep this as one and one or two, just to ensure that there is not a huge step from one picture to the next that could lead actually in kind of gaps of focus and afterwards in a not completely sharp image. Of course, this uh, focus stack needs to be assembled on the computer afterwards. And if you would be interested to see how this is done, then just let me know in the comments below. There are different programs to do it, like Affinity Photo, Adobe Photoshop, or the free software Canon Photo Professional. Just let me know what you prefer. And of course, make sure to like the video and subscribe to my channels and activate the notifications so that you will actually yeah, hear about it when I re finally release this video. Until then, I would say thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye.